Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, exploration. Okay, I'm going to talk about an exploration into QR codes and using them as like an unexpected phishing vector. Uh, so first of all, who am I? I'm fourth year ethical hacker. Uh, like Linux a bit, and I'm currently doing my botnet on disrupting the Myri botnet. No, I'm doing my dissertation on disrupting the Myri botnet. Um, so. First of all, we all know what QR codes are, right? They're little annoying squares that you scan with your phone. Uh, QR stands for Quick Response Codes, and they were invented in 1994 by Denzo Wave to help with manufacturing. Um, so, that's how it works. Basically, it doesn't matter. It contains a few positioning squares and a bunch of data, and it's also got some complicated error correction maths. So, you can technically, like, cover half of a QR code and it still works. Most of the time they're used, like the simplest form, they store data, so they can store bytes or bits, they can store numeric or alphanumeric data, and they can also store kanji, which usually just gets used to store URLs to point to some website. Um, so you've got, I've got a few examples basically. So you've got parking, you've got text and protect, that I'm sure we've all been scanning a bunch of the past few years. Uh, there's been a few people on Twitter posting QR codes as links to torrent sites. Uh, Amazon uses QR codes to do package tracking, and there was the big famous um, recent ad at the Super Bowl by Coinbase with just a single QR code bouncing around. So what are the malicious uses of a QR code? So storing it as data probably isn't going to be very useful. But as a URL that someone can scan on their phone and get taken to a malicious website, that could be potentially really useful because it lets you place URLs in the real world where people aren't expecting to get attacked by phishing links. So the generic malicious URLs that you could have, pretty well studied, you could have a reflective cross-site scripting attack, you could have a clone of the real site that someone accesses and enters their data and then you get all their data. You could have a beef server running, and you can steal a bunch of their browser details using that. Or you could run some malicious JavaScript when they open the web page, um, which would let you install things or mess with their stuff, basically. So why would you use a QR code versus a hypo? I realize I'm going really fast. I'm sorry. Um, so QR codes are pretty unreadable. Like, you can technically do it, but you're not going to be able to do it in like any meaningful time. And most people are getting rel relatively good at looking at a URL and deciding that it looks a bit sus. And it's like a really long string, and you're like, nah, I'm not going to click on that. But with QR codes, especially with like test and protect and all this track and trace stuff, everyone just kind of sees them and just scans them because that's what you do with a QR code. And so, like, you could very easily just place QR codes in places that people are already expecting them, and they're not going to think twice about just scanning a QR code. Um, on top of that, there's quite there's a lot of apps to scan QR codes, but some of them are kind of a bit shit. Um, so you've got Google Lens itself, which is pretty good because it like tells you the entire URL, and you've got. But you've got some that, you've got this one here that gives you a little disclaimer that goes, ooh, it may be a dangerous link, don't click it if you don't, if you don't trust it. But like, that's not going to do anything. Uh, you've got the one on the far end, it doesn't even tell you the full URL, it just tells you the domain. And so the rest of it could contain a bunch of cross-site scripting. Or you can't like do anything about that. And the other one is, a screenshot from uh, Google the Play Store, and there's a Kaspersky has their own URL scanning app that they claim will protect you against dangerous links. Uh, all I found was it immediately opened the link without even letting you look at it. So you just held your phone up, and it immediately opened without you even like doing anything, which was a bit scary. So. How can you bring URLs and malicious stuff and QR codes together? So you could have a malicious actor who would mirror 
a restaurant's web app. Like, lots of re- restaurants are starting to have web apps, like Nando's. You can order online, you scan a little QR code on the table. And then if you start replacing a couple of the QR codes in the restaurant with your malicious versions, and then you could start skimming money off of the transactions. The transactions would still go through to Nando's. Nando's would still give them their food. And the only thing that we'd notice is a difference is that it costs a couple quid more. And then as you pocketing like two quid off of every transaction and across the entirety of the UK, potentially like kind of scary how much you could make basically. Oh, that one's kind of fucked. Um, so, you wouldn't scan a QR code, right? Well, in Pennsylvania, there's this university that did an experiment, and they placed a bunch of QR codes all over the town, all over the city. About 61% of those flyers got scanned, with about 225 hits. can't really read it. But something like 60% of the QR codes that got scanned... Like, it, it, like, you could have survey. And 60% of the responses just said that they did it because they were curious. Not because they actually wanted any more information. They were just like, oh, what's this? And, like, 14% said that they did it for fun. Um, and the next experiment they did is they had a bulletin board that they put a little surveillance camera next to it. This bit's all cut off. Um, but they tracked people who, like, walked up and scanned the QR code, but then didn't follow the link. And they found that of the 18 people in the one-week period that they saw scanning the QR code, only three of them didn't follow the link. So, yeah, I had like 15 people reading the link and deciding that it was safe enough to follow and go look at whatever random things there are. Um, so people do seem to scan QR codes. And on top of that, like, there's the... When you expect one to be there, it's much easier to just assume that it's safe. If you expect there to be a QR code, like, in a restaurant to scan for their menu, you're just going to do it. And you're not going to think twice about that, right? So, you wouldn't scan a QR code. So, you may have noticed there's a few QR codes all over the the uh, conference center today, or the uni, I guess. And you guys are actually pretty good. So, you only... I only got 10 people scanning them, or 9 people scanning them. Which is pretty good. Um, and I had all these red dots with little locations around the map. I had them positioned. Uh, but I had two that looked like the test and protect, uh, like little chaos. I should have had a foe, but I was stupid. Um, and both of those got scanned two times on one of them and three times on the other. And that was in half a day, if that. And the actual test and protect site has you enter in details. So you can start scraping like people's information relatively easily. I also had three relatively innocuous ones. They're just the QR code and a security logo. And all in all, those ones got scanned like four times or something, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, people, like even like you lot, like security professionals, just scan them for fun because you're curious as to what it is. So what do we do to protect ourselves against like the potential for malicious QR codes that are gonna they're gonna steal your shit. So as a user, if you keep your devices up to date, any malicious web app that you access, it's probably not gonna be that consequential. Don't just go around scanning all of them, as they say curious to kill the cat. So if it looks a bit suspicious, you don't really need to know. Like it's a random QR code in the middle of nowhere. You don't need to scan everything. If you can do things physically, it's going to just be better the majority of the time because you don't have to deal with accessing the weird online world. And on top of that, HTTPS is not enough. It just encrypts your data and it's relatively easy for malicious websites to get a HTTPS certification. So there's like not much that stops a hacker who has a certified like who has a certificate for the HTTPS of just putting malicious shit there regardless. As security professionals, um, this is mainly going to target like mobile users. No one's going to lug their laptop around and try to scan a QR code like that, right? So on top of that, a lot of what would be pretty effective is mirrors or clones. 
So if you try to focus on making sure that your website is not susceptible to mirror or clone-based attacks, and you also keep your website secure against cross-site scripting or clickjacking, then you're already going pretty far. And on top of that, make sure you just don't have like random QR codes around your venue. Like if you're running a thing and there's a random QR code that you didn't put there yourself, it's probably not, <laughs> probably doesn't need to be there. Like you don't need to place QR codes ever, right? So that was relatively a quick talk, but thank you for listening to my short ramble. Uh, if you want to ramble more, I'll be in the pub, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't have any short questions here. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned about the first week. You tried that with the previous attempts. I've tried. I've tried tried it against some malicious um, links. And they just opened them immediately. The, the links, I think the links were dead though, so the sites that they were accessing were, weren't like active. So maybe if the sites were active, it would have thrown something out, but it just immediately opens a web, like opens a browser, which is just kind of a bit not nice regardless. Um, that was the only one that I could find that advertised like checking um but again like uh i don't know google lens like works really well i think they talked about some like adding some more security to it at some point but i'm not sure if that fell through um but yeah the main thing is just if you scan a link and it looks a bit weird like the url that i had the, the official security url was secure tayuk and the URL on my QR codes outside are just secure secure-tay.uk. So like it's the same as regular phishing links, just pay attention to what the link looks like. And if it looks a bit not right, you don't need to click on it. Yeah? So uh, currently uh QR code authentication is, is on the rise, so you see it and it's what you see the QR codes Discord. Uh, in relation to your talk about you know, looking where the endpoint is, is it just legitimate? How would you uh, go about? Well, so now you know we have to trust that that's safer doing it through the QR codes and putting it password in. How yeah. would you uh, go over your thoughts on that? Um, well, from my understanding, the the authentication methods like that are usually like the QR code gets generated at use time and then doesn't is like no longer valid after it's used I'm fairly certain. In which case it's relatively decent. Um because that that is in, in those situations I think the QR code is just being used to store like a key that's used as a one time password. Um versus like um for, versus like a QR code that you'd leave out on a table for someone to scan, right? Um I'm not so sure.